My name is Philip O'Sullivan. Hi, my name is Mike Miller. My name is Gerardo Injoque. I'm Ineke. My name is Nick Scherenberg. My name is Shannon. Hi, my name is Simon. What does it feel like to be a circumnavigator? Um, it feels, feels really good. I, feel, I just feel like I've achieved this amazing thing which I never ever thought I would do. It's like I have a white piece of canvas in front of me. Uh, it's just much more liberating my choices. What does it mean to circumnavigate the world? It, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's something not, not many people do. So, so Robin always says that uh, there are more people climbing Mount Everest than circumnavigating the world. So that's kind of something super special. One moment we're like, yeah, this, this is it, this is amazing. We've, we've sailed so far. Uh, we left England and we're almost back in England the long way around. And other moments, it is kind of like, well, it's just another day at sea. <laughs> was training for this new career and I thought before I start work and take on a whole new career I'm gonna I'm gonna do something for myself do something really selfish and just take a vacation or you know a journey and when I had found Clipper Race I signed up for it and just thought to do a couple legs before I started my new career and, um, and then bit by bit I kept adding legs until I found my way around the world. Clipper Race has made it possible for us to do something that you absolutely cannot do. Uh, to me, the Clipper Race is all about sailing around the world, racing around the world. And that's the achievement, that's the mountain that I really wanted to climb. In itself, the decision was uh, an achievement because for me it meant uh, breaking up with the traditional path and the traditional mold of good career, good education, climbing the corporate ladder, making money, and sailing around the world doesn't fit with that, uh, but it felt right. It was always that curiosity about discovering uh, the world and redoing the route that our ancestors have done. Um, and it was just that extreme, uh, extreme environment, extreme competitive environment uh, that was so attractive to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm a sports guy, I love pushing my limits, I love teamwork. Uh, and that was just pushing that sailing passion to the extreme. The first time we hoisted a spinnaker that had the race of your life on it, you, it just felt so real and it just really felt like this huge adventure was about to begin, it was about to take place and that I was part of it. The clipper boats and the clipper race are made for, for speed, so on a normal yard, you maybe you're happy when you do five, six knots, and uh, on a clipper boat, you do average like ten. Um, we had top speeds of over twenty or thirty knots, so that's very different. The the first time getting on the helm on the seventy can be slightly intimidating. It's a big boat, but once you're actually on the helm, it feels quite light. It feels as if it's right that you are in control of the boat and that the boat will do what needs to be done as long as you guide it correctly. And that takes a little bit of getting used to under the different sails. But we have many, many, many thousand miles. <laughs> so over time you become really confident and you really start to understand how the boat responds to the different movements and the different wind types and how you should be reacting to that. So it becomes natural um, to, to sail the boat that way. One thing that most of the race crew have in common is that they are looking for an adventure and a way to push themselves out of their normal comfort zone and work hard to, to achieve that. It takes a lot of courage, definitely, because it's, it's an adventure, it, it's a risky adventure. And it definitely puts you in a place where only with courage you can do what you have to do. It uh, doesn't matter if you have to climb the mast or dive into the water to cut a fishing line. I mean, everything takes a lot of courage, especially when we have tough conditions. The will to keep going. Um, we have times where it's really hard, uh, the conditions are really difficult, and it, 
you know, conditions being difficult could be hurricane force winds or they could be bobbing around in the doldrums for days on end. And psychologically that becomes very tough. I think a wind toll strikes more terror in my heart than uh, you know, 100 mile an hour winds because you're out there in the wind hole. And I remember one time just sitting there like, is this ever going to end? So you're in a wind hole and I saw hair float by on the water and I thought, a hair floated by. Like, it doesn't even sink. It's so dead calm. It's just floating on top of the water. And I thought, that's it. We're, <laughs> we're going to be here forever. The most memorable moment from a um, nature point of view was when we were crossing the North Pacific. Um, and we got a storm come through. <laughs> with, um, uh, we know now had hurricane force winds and waves with a sea state called Phenomenal, which I didn't even know existed until then. Um, I just remember looking up and thinking, wow, that's a ski slope coming straight at me. <laughs> that's how big those waves were. And it was uh, incredibly beautiful and awe-inspiring and at the same time terrifying, uh, but exhilarating. It's, uh, it was an amazing, amazing experience. Uh, and I think anybody that was on any of the boats at that moment in time will never forget um, that night. You never feel isolated. Uh, at all. You, you just get a sense of the, the wonder of it. You know, even when you're sailing across the North Pacific amongst these huge waves and you look at the map and work out that if there was going to be a medevac today, you would have to sail 1,500 miles to Hawaii uh, as your closest port of call. Um, it's what you said, a long, long, long way from anywhere. It's, uh, it still is um, the, the team spirit, the camaraderie, the, the, the joint experience. Is, uh, is great and, and there's always something to think about, there's always something to talk about, there's something to, to see. It was incredible, sitting on deck and looking around you and all you can see for 360 degrees is ocean, is a feeling and a memory I'm never going to forget and I'm going to really, really miss it. The nature's been amazing. I have to say that when I started the race, I it just didn't quite dawn on me some of the sights that we'd see. But the wildlife has been fantastic. We've seen whales, dolphins, turtles, um, jumping manta rays, sharks, stonefish. Then the birds, you know, in the Southern Ocean, the birds are just beautiful. The albatrosses just circling around us for days on end. And then you've got things like the, the stars and the moon and sunrises and sunsets. I um, think a particular uh, memory is we saw a lunar eclipse and that was just stunning. You know, you're lying there in the middle of an ocean watching this beautiful thing take place and it just, it just makes you reflect and think that a lot of the time it's the simple things in life that can give you a lot of pleasure. Being in, in the middle of the ocean, it's like uh, you feel sometimes that you're, you and your crew are, are the only persons alive on Earth. It's quite a a, quite a thrill um, being in such an isolated place. Uh, sometimes the only human beings closer to us were in the spatial station. And that feels, I wouldn't know how to describe that. It just feels like a, an adventure, uh, like, like being one of those explorers on, on the Arctic or on the polar cap. And, and it's very humbling too. You feel very, very little in the presence of such a, a vast ocean. In the end, so it's, it's that, that balance of uh, excitement and routine that you, you build into. So we, we like to call it the clipper bubble as well. Um, but it's just, it, it's when you take a step back, when you, uh, when you meet your friends and, on shore and family and you talk to them and, and just a question that people have with regards to, to the race, you just realize how, how lucky you are to be there and to live that dream. And then when you step back, you're like, oh yeah, it's true. This is absolutely fantastic. And the first thing I heard when we came in was a shrieking from the end of the pontoon. And so, you know, it's moments like that when family and friends come and visit you and, and you show them the boat for the first time or whatever, and they just think, I, they just say out loud, you know, just can't believe that you've done this and that you're here and, and you've achieved this amazing thing. This for Clipper is about winning. I think it's, it's not only about winning. Um, 
So for me, I approached it. I think I was, I was more competitive before the race <laughs> than I, than I am now. It's not necessarily about the time, or it's definitely not about the position on a marathon where you come out. It's more about you do it and you achieve whatever you think is right. So just being able to sail around the world and, and get that done, I think, is, is a large achievement. Winning feels amazing. It, it feels rewarding because all the efforts you've put, you've put in to, to get there. But something I realized with winning in, in, in the Clipper is it's not all about winning. It's, it's about the process of competing. I, I enjoy competing more than winning. Winning is a result of uh, hard work, less mistake than the other, and a lot of luck at the end of the day. The Clipper race for me has been, I just see it as this amazing opportunity. It opened doors for me that I, I never knew were closed or didn't know existed. My family, um, they are my personal support system. It's been interesting to, for all of us to, I think we've all grown up this year, and I think they're proud of me for what I've done and I'm proud of them for taking care of everything and me while I've been gone. All through life it's very easy to say no to things. What this has, has proved to, to everybody is that if you say yes, you'll normally find out something surprising about yourself uh, and something surprising about the situation. You will see things you don't expect and experience things you don't expect. You know, I've grown far closer to my wife. Uh, we've had the most amazing joint experience, joint journey, which I don't think for very few married couples will have gone through such a crazy thing. Even though we haven't spent a huge amount of time together over the whole year, it's been a, it's been a great thing. And I think uh, it's imbued in both of us the sense that we want to keep uh, having adventures. If you're looking for an adventure, and if you're looking to be out of your comfort zone, you see that as an opportunity to grow. The Clipper race is definitely a good way to do that. And it doesn't matter where you come from or what your sailing experience is. This is something that, as a person, it can become a milestone. Sailing around the world, which is one thing that I've always had in my mind. You know, I'm, I want to do this. I want to complete it. I want to finish it. And there's been many times when I've wanted to give up and I've been in stopovers at times and thought I don't want to get back on that boat. But I also never wanted to only do half of it or a quarter of it or one leg of it. I've, I've always been deep down very determined to complete the circumnavigation. It, it now all being over is just the most incredible feeling and I think it's going to take a lot of thinking time over the next few months or maybe even longer to kind of realise exactly what I've achieved. But I'm so glad that I've done it and I think being a circumnavigator is a pretty cool thing to put on your CV.